Today we're going to turn stump remover, powdered sugar, sulfur, and a little bit of kitty litter into working rocket engines. So the first step in building your rocket engines, you're going to want to gather your uh, supplies for the rocket fuel. So here I have a spectra size stump remover, potassium nitrate. Have a bottle of stuff that I already ran through the blender um, to make it really uh, finely powdered. Like the consistency of powdered sugar is what you're looking for. Second fuel or uh, part of the fuel is powdered sugar. Um, this is actually acting as the fuel that the potassium nitrate oxidizes. So the potassium nitrate supplying our oxygen, um, powdered sugar is acting as our fuel. And then we're also going to use a little bit of sulfur. That's to increase the burn rate. Um, so it's acting as a burn rate catalyst. Um, other things you're going to need, some bentonite clay. So this was just some uh, super cheap kitty litter from Walmart that I ground up in a blender. And then I also uh, melted in some paraffin wax. And that gives it a really nice consistency that tamps down really well. Forms really solid end plugs. You're also going to want some uh, two and a half inch sections of PVC pipe. This is uh, one half inch inner diameter PVC, schedule 40. You're going to want a 5 eighths inch dowel. Now the thing here is the uh, half inch PVC, that's a nominal rating, so it's not actually going to be half inch. Um, the inner diameter you can see here is actually more, more along the lines of 0.6. So take our 5 eighths inch dowel, you're going to want to sand it down until you get a good fit through the 0.6. You're going to have to take off a little bit of material and just try to do it nice and evenly. Not very hard to do. And we're ready to make rocket engines. So you're going to want to measure out 67 grams of potassium nitrate. It's a good idea to keep this stuff in an airtight bottle because it does uh, pick up moisture out of the air very effectively. It's very hydroscopic. Almost 67 on the dot, 27 grams of sugar, pretty darn close, and then 6 grams of sulfur. So you'll notice my sulfur is a little clumpy, but it is very, very finely powdered, so it'll mix in just fine. There we go, six grams. And this is our rocket fuel. So now we just got to mix it up really good, make sure it's very uh, well combined, no big chunks. And, uh, and at that point, we will have a usable rocket fuel. So I'm just going to mix this up for a few minutes. Make sure any chunks are broken up really well. Wouldn't be a bad idea to throw this in a uh, maybe a Tupperware container and shake it up really good. Next step is going to be to take your dowel that you've uh, sanded down to match the inner diameter of the PVC pipe and two and a half inches from the tip of the dowel you want to mark a line and then another line a half inch from that that'll be your clay section. You'll have a one inch section. That'll be your mix. Um, then a quick quarter inch section. That'll be our delay mix. So that's actually gonna be one part sodium bicarbonate baking soda with uh, 10 parts of mix. And you can adjust that accordingly if you want a faster or a longer delay. 
and then we're going to put another half inch section of clay behind that. So for this example piece I'm going to be using some clear PVC pipe. You can get this stuff right on Amazon, it's really cool. And if you're doing this with your son or something, it's awesome to be able to actually, you know, hot glue this thing down to a piece of wood. Watch from a safe distance, but you can actually see the inside of the combustion chamber with the clear PVC. So that's really cool. So to get half inch of clay, it's going to be roughly one teaspoon of a bentonite clay total. So each one of these is a half. This should bring us right up to the half inch mark. Might need a little bit more. going to start adding the rocket fuel. And you want to regularly compress this stuff down. It's very hygroscopic and it is currently summer so it's very humid. too much. That's perfect. Brought it right to the line. As you can see there. So now I pre-made some delay mix. You literally just want to take a small amount of your uh, standard mix and add in some baking soda to slow down the burn rate. Should leave a small amount of uh, headspace at the top of the engine, and that's important because that's where our burst charge is going to, or uh, ejection charge, is going to sit. And if you don't have an ejection charge, you're not going to have anything more than a, a big long dart. There we go. So you can see here, if it would focus, we have a section of clay, section of mix, our delay in here, and then another section of clay. 
Now we just got to drill out the core with a 532nd drill bit and then we'll drill out a little hole just enough to touch the delay section. And then we could add a little bit of black powder there and that'll act as our ejection charge. You can see I got the 532nd drill bit here and I secured a piece of tape uh, one half inch or one and a half inches from the tip and that's going to let us know when to stop drilling. Now I have it secured in the little chuck here. You can easily stand it up and do it by hand as long as it's vertical. Want to get it nice and center. Normally I would not touch a moving drill bit. This is at such a low speed. Still is a dumb thing to do. And you just want to go nice and slow through your propellant because this is a live rocket fuel now. So too much friction, it could heat up and it could go off. So, we got our nozzle drilled, and then we're going to go through the back and just touch off I think we just got the mix there. So we've got our finished engine here, or just about finished. All we have to do now is add the ejection charge. I'm out of black powder, so for this example, I'm just going to use a little smokeless powder. Now this wouldn't be optimal to use in, a, in an actual engine. Um, needs a lot of confinement and pressure to actually burn quickly, so this probably wouldn't pop your parachute. Um, black powder is definitely better for that. But uh, I'll just tamp a little paper towel in there, hold it in place. All right, and there's our finished engine. Let's go give it a test fire. So our first attempt wasn't the hottest. So what I did is I made another one exactly the same, but I did a core length of one and a quarter inch instead of one and a half. And that should improve the uh, the timing of the delay ejection. So the, the last one definitely would have gotten your rocket in the air, but it would have ejected a little bit prematurely. Premature ejaculation. Not something you want your rocket to have. Let's give this one a shot. much better so that's exactly what we're looking for so ignore what I said about the one and a half inch uh, the one and a half inch uh, depth for the drill stop set that at one and a quarter and you will have a perfect rocket engine so here we have a little bit of the rocket fuel we made so 67 parts potassium nitrate uh, 27 parts uh, powdered sugar, and then six parts sulfur. Um, so most of what's going on here is basically the potassium nitrate is oxidizing the sugar into carbon dioxide, and it's also making some potassium carbonate. Now there's a whole bunch of other side reactions going on with the sulfur, um, and what the sulfur is in there for is to increase the burn rate. So let's give this fuel a little uh, test shot. So you can see that burns pretty vigorously. Um, not quite as quickly as a uh, good black powder, but, but it's up there. All right guys, well I really hope you enjoyed the video. 
you know, we might be building rocket engines here, but it sure ain't rocket science. Um, so get out there, buy some stump remover, make your own, have a good time, go out, launch some little rockets with it. And uh, if you like the video, please hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing. If not, no worries. And uh, hope you have a good day.